11. It's actually 10. It's episode 10. It's not 11, but man, I didn't think, you know, next week will be episode 11. I feel like, I feel like we all need to do something special on that 11, on the 11th episode. It's the only time it will happen. It's like when, I don't know, it's like when the date is like 2 2 20, Two, that'll be in two years, but you know what I mean. February 2nd, 22 at 2.22 p.m. or whatever. It's our only chance to do something, guys. And hey, speaking of... Hello? Hello? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's good. I'm going to check in on the chat. I'm going to make sure that... You know. You know. I think it's working. We're going to make sure, though. But yeah, David, it's the 11th episode next week. Um, which is... Sort of burying the lead. It's the 10th episode today. It's the 11th week we've been doing it. It's the 10th episode. And, um, I don't know. I, for some reason, I feel like that is some kind of milestone. Uh, I don't know why it necessarily, I mean, when you think about it, if you start getting weird, the whole reason tens are milestones to us is because we count in base 10. And the whole reason we count in base 10 is because we have 10 fingers and toes. And so if we uh, had six you know, fingers on each hand, then we'd be celebrating the 12th episode or whatever. So I, it, it's somewhat arbitrary. But my point is, it's the 10th episode. So look, we made it, guys. I feel like the BBC runs programming that only goes to 10 episodes. And then they'll, they'll be like, that was a huge hit. Let's never do that again. Whereas the US, we do it a little differently. We go, we run 10 episodes of something that's marginally successful. And they go, let's never stop this. Let's do this for nine years until we've run out of all the jokes. So, uh, Maybe there's a happy medium in there. Maybe the BBC and NBC can get together and figure out the right way to do this. But anyway, guys, that's not the point. We're not here to program television. We're here to program beats. Uh, oh, <laughs> I already see a question about the blue finger. Uh, let me tell you about the blue finger. Well, should I tell you now or should I tell you later? I'll tell you about the blue finger right now. Um, I uh, so Maybe some of you know I play banjo. Uh, for my banjo, I, I put uh, acrylic on my nail to reinforce it. And uh, normally, in a non-quarantine era, I go to uh, a nail salon, I walk in, I have an awkward conversation with the very friendly people in the nail salon about the fact that I need to get an acrylic nail, but just one nail. Uh, and I try and explain that I play guitar and it seems to go over kind of okay. But uh, anyway, that's not possible because the you know shops, up, up until recently, shops haven't been, been open at all. And even still, I'm, you know, I'm maybe not so crazy about, maybe they're, well, I don't know, maybe they want the business, I'm not sure. But, but you know, I'm not sure that I would call Banjo Nail an essential service that really is necessary. So, all that said, I wasn't, I haven't been able, you know, for all the banjo jokes that have flown around on this podcast, I haven't been able to play banjo for weeks. Because my, my the acrylic from pre-quarantine time fell off, and... I've been been without a, a banjo nail, which is terrible for me. Maybe my neighbors love it. But um, I finally, I decided, all right, I'm left-hand dominant. The acrylic goes on my right hand, so I can apply with some marginal success some acrylic if I could just figure out how to do it. So I watched these videos of people that make, you know, like the super spiky, bedazzled nails, you know, and... Um, I tried to apply that knowledge. I went on Amazon. I ordered, a, you know, bottles of monomer and acrylic powder and nail primer and maximum bond cohesion stuff. And just anyway, like I, I went I went all out to make my nail. One thing I forgot to get was nail polish. And so I went to my local. Where is it? I went to my local um, pharmacy and I. Their shelves, are like many stores, their shelves are kind of out of things that used to be just taken for granted. One of those being the rainbow of colors of uh, nail polish. And so looking at a bunch of, you know, hot pink and rose pink and light pink, and I just was like, what's the, what's the not pink option? And it was, it was this, it was like a kind of, I don't know, in the bottle, I was like, nah, all right, that'll do. And then I came home. And then I put it on, and now I'm this guy. 
And I don't know exactly how I feel about it. I don't feel fantastic about it, but at least for the time being, I'm this guy. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to get, uh, some other color there. So, you know, we'll see. But, um, anyway, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there, but I'm glad to see you guys. You know, we were, um, I, I I'm not going to say off last week. I mean, we were not on the air. So in that sense, we were off. Um, but we joined uh, with uh, a lot of people, both individuals and uh, m music industry companies, from record labels to publishers to uh, to the music tech companies and everybody, in uh, what became known as Blackout Tuesday. And, um, you know, I, w there was some discussion. I mean, I'll, I'll just be somewhat uh, riffing and candid with you guys. Uh, there was some discussion about, you know, what is the right move there? What do we do? I mean, our hearts are obviously with uh, the the movement that's going on right now. Um, I don't think that's going out on a limb to say. I know the companies generally try not to be uh, political one way or another, but but I think this, uh, this ex last week or 10 days kind of supersedes normal politics. I would hope it was. And I, and, and I certainly, um, I certainly think that that's what we've seen is that this is bigger than just some of the normal kind of, um, political wonkery. So anyway, uh, so our hearts were obviously with them, but, and, but then the, you, you, we, you know, as it was approaching that you get into this thing of, some people, um, like Peter Kern from Create Digital Music was saying, no, no we, we should, we should definitely not take the day off. We should never rest on our laurels, I think was kind of his idea, and, and we should push forward, and that's what we should be showing. And and other people said we should we should stand with the movement and not go on. And then and there was all there was there was sort of this triangulation of uh things that happened in in those things where you're gonna get kind of criticized anyway, you go. Uh and so we had to just fall back on what we felt and, and what we felt the right thing to do was to uh Support the movement, su support Blackout Tuesday, go off for the week. And, and so we did. Um, so anyway, um, it's been a weird, it's been a weird week, right? I mean, I don't know how it is for you, for those of you that are watching, uh, in the rest of the world, uh, I'm coming to you from the U S and it's been a weird week in the U S it's been a weird, I mean, the whole, these whole, these streams started from, what was a weird experience. And now that's like, oh, remember the pandemic? How quaint. How, oh, that was so funny when we were terrified of the pandemic. And um, so it, 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 you know, things definitely got weird. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where various comedians are, are kind of writing the same concept, which is like getting in a time machine and going back to yourself in April and explaining just how weird it's going to get. But Anyway, um, so the point was, though, I, last week I had uh, originally booked Adam Fielding to come on and be my guest. And I talked to Adam. I said, hey, Adam, listen, this is this is kind of where our hearts at and, and minds are at. And, and this is what we think the right thing to do is. And um, he obviously uh, he, he agreed with us and he, he was like, oh, of course. Yeah, let's, you know, let's do this next week, which would be this week. And then yesterday. I got a message from Adam. Adam, I'm sorry to say, is feeling under the weather. And I hope he's okay. Like, I, what he actually said to me is he, he got together with some family, and then he was like, I'm not feeling well. And now, you know, that's like instantly, that's like, oh my God, Adam's got coronavirus. But I, I don't, you know, that's just sort of the, the PTSD of the last three months that, that any cold is like, it's the big one. It's, you know, when I lived in San Diego briefly as a kid, anytime there was any tremor, it was like, it's the big one. Uh, and it was, I guess the same is true in San Francisco though. I've gotten more used to it, but, um, yeah, so that, that's sort of the, Oh no, I hope he's okay. And I, I do hope he's okay. And if he's watching Adam, jump in the chat and let us know you're alive. But, um, anyway, he said he was, uh, he wasn't feeling great. And he said, would it be okay if we, if we postpone uh, my appearance? And I, uh, I said, Adam Fielding, don't you cross me, Adam Fielding. I will ruin you in this industry. No, I didn't. I said, I, I hope you feel better. And of course we can, of course. So um, what that means is it's just us today. I could have booked another guest, but I actually had a thought. And we'll get to that. Um, but um, 
while I'm while we're doing a little bit of uh, housekeeping here, there was a discussion in the chat. I want to talk about before we kind of get going with the rest of things. I wanted to talk about to some degree what you guys want from these streams or what we collectively want as a music making uh, community. There was someone who, um, and forgive me for forgetting, it was King something something in the chat that said, hey, you guys should have a rack extension developer on to highlight their products and, and kind of interview them and, and showcase their stuff. And obviously that there's, I've had thoughts like that when I think about what we can do with this stream, but I want to kind of take your guys's temperature on that because I'll be honest, I, I'm somewhat, I'm somewhat protective, I guess you could say of this cool thing we got going on here, which is that like we get together, we hang out, we make music and like, there's no major agenda. Like I'm not on here to like sell you guys upgrades or I'm not on here to like tell you about the features that you can only get if you're using reason sweet and try and entice it. There's no, like there's no ulterior motive to what we're doing. We're just hanging out and making music. And so from the very beginning, when I've thought about this stream and when I've been planning for the stream, and even when I talk with people at, at Reason Studios, we kind of all have that same feeling of like, the number one thing that would ruin this is if we just made it feel like it's a an infomercial, a weekly infomercial where we're telling you, and act now because it's on sale in the shop and whatever. So with that in mind, then there's the other side of that, which is that like, if we had on rack extension developers, you guys would get to see some stuff that maybe you tried it. Maybe you did the 30 day demo a long time ago and you'd, you'd want to see it again. Or maybe um, you want to see kind of its official intended use as the developer designed it and kind of understand their thinking on it before maybe starting your trial or, or getting it or whatever. So like there is, obviously there is a value to having rack extension developers on. So like, I don't want to like shun them, especially if you guys want to talk to them. I just want to make sure that like we're kind of collectively making this decision of like what we can do with this stream format. And there, there's a lot of things we have done. There's a lot of things we might double back to, you know, in terms of like, maybe I'll have another one where we all get on a zoom call and hang out. And maybe I'll have another one where we play uh, that, uh, that the, the game where, where someone describes a beat and I try and make it. And we, we might, go back to parts of the format, but we're also going to play with other elements of the format. And so part of that would be, um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be getting questions about the blue nail all day. I'm seeing in the chat. So yeah, anyway, let us, let us know in the comments. Stefan is manning the comments as usual. And, um, I'm going to ask Stefan to maybe, uh, just, you don't have to be super official about it, but just kind of get a sense of where people are at with that. And, um, and if people are into it, then let's have, Let's have some developers on and let's talk to them and stuff. And in fact, I, I saw when this discussion was going on that Electric Panda was in the chat and uh, like, there you go. Like, consider this maybe your official invite. Join us. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, so anyway, with that in mind, why don't we uh, why don't we get to our our agenda? And by our agenda, I kind of mean no agenda because I'm kind of just going to be hanging out with you guys. But um there, let's see where we can, oh, you know what, I, there's one other thing I wanted to, to mention up front, because I just thought this was fun, so I'm going to share, it's a, a, one of our fellow music makers that I thought was kind of fun. I, um, some of you guys know Justin Williams, he's done some videos with us, he is a, a photographer, videographer, music producer down in New Orleans, and um, he and I are, are just good buds now, so we'll text, you know, about various things, um, and he let me know when the quarantine started that he was, uh, he wanted to learn harmonica and I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know? Yeah, sure, man, go for it. And then I got a, a video from him where he was like, it was like two weeks into his harmonica. I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And then last night I got another video six weeks in. And I, I, when I saw him, I was like, Hey, do you mind if I just show these on the stream to kind of shout you out? But also, um, I don't know. There's something I, I, I love about, my own process, but also watching other people's process of learning a learning curve, learning an instrument. When you see someone improving, I don't know, there's something very 
inspiring about it. So here's, look, just check this out. So Justin sends me this uh, video of him. This is f like a month ago, and he's just kind of learning to like puff and puff a little bit on the on the harmonica. Here, here's how it goes. <laughs> So I loved, I already loved it. Like I was like, Hey, you're like really going. But one of the things I loved about it too, is that, that Justin is, um, you can tell that Justin's sort of influence is sort of the Southern New Orleans, you know, and then the sort of Gulf region harmonica, blues harmonica kind of thing. It's, it's a different kind of, um, mindset than I was for, for some reason expecting. I don't, I don't know why, but you know, I, I want to hear, I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's that thing. I, when he said he was learning harmonica, I was like making John Popper jokes and blues traveler jokes and stuff. But like, you know, I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. You can also hear in the background of that one, his, uh, one year old son who is, uh, also learning harmonica, <laughs> but he, anyway, so last night he sends me this one and this one I love. This is like, you know, just a few weeks puffing away on the uh, harmonica and now he's getting better. So check this out. So pretty good. I don't know. I like it. So anyway, I, I saw it and I was like, I got to put, I got to put this on. Like maybe in, in a month, you know, I assume maybe we'll still be streaming and we'll have Justin update us and we'll kind of see how it is. And let me tell you, uh, like he's getting to the point now where I'm like, oh, we're going to, we're going to collab. I'm going to, I want to do stuff with that, which sort of segues me into today's half agenda. I made a, a joke not a joke. I made a tease in the description of this one and of this, of this live stream. And I said that uh, today we were probably going to be covering the number one requested topic while we've been doing these streams. And it like, it's a half joke and it's half not because I think the request has been a half joke and half not. Um, and I'm not sure where you guys fall. So we're going to find out this, this may be a, a be careful what you wish for. Mark swing says, is it time? Don't tease me. He says, well, listen, Mark. So, so today I decided, I, I let me, let me just, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you one more clue that will give it away too. Hang on. Today I decided that maybe this would be a more appropriate piece of attire. Huh? Eh? I think, I think it's banjo o'clock, people. Although I'm not going to wear this all day. Um, yeah, I was, I started thinking, you know, there's been all these uh, comments, you know, you guys know I play banjo. And so like, there's been all these comments and then there's been people that are like, you know, banjo is a classic crack a joke kind of thing. Um, but I think some people mean it, I think, and I certainly mean it. And I sort of thought like, well, if we're just going to hang out today, maybe I actually will use this time to play some banjo with you guys and kind of introduce you to it in a way that is not, I mean, I'm not going to, let's be honest. I'm not going to play Appalachian fiddle tunes on a banjo all day for you guys. As much as I might enjoy it, you guys, maybe not so much. So, um, I thought we could just kind of mess around though with kind of what the, um, what the, the, uh, what other vibes you can do. And so, and sort of there's a broader topic here of, you know, if someone you're working with uses a non-traditional instrument, they don't play guitar, bass, or maybe they do, but maybe they also play mandolin or, 
uh, jaw harp, you know, or, or accordion or bagpipes. Is that, is that just off the table or is that like, oh, cool. What can we, how can we kind of find our way in creatively with that, with the music that we do or we, we like to do. So that was kind of, that's kind of my thinking today. I'm thinking, shall we, shall we do it? I think we shall. So in order to do that, I, I guess, you know, we'll figure, well, let's figure, we're going to kind of figure out how to do this. I, I, I thought first maybe what I would do is actually, um, I'll, I'm actually, I'll give you a little bit, something of a lesson. I'll talk a little bit about the banjo, not, not a ton, but, um, but, but a little bit about it just, um, before we kind of get going. So, um, the, the banjo actually is, I mean, it's, it, I could talk for a long time about a kind of um, complicated history that the banjo has, particularly in America. The banjo um, has its roots in Africa. It was a uh, an instrument that uh, we our best scholars believe came from an instrument called the akanting, uh, which is uh, it looks very similar. So it's a gourd, a hollowed out gourd with a stick and uh, two strings. And the, the two strings are, are similar to, I gotta go this way, similar to a banjo in that um, you've got one string that runs the full length of the banjo and then another string which ends halfway up. And the, uh, that, that halfway up string is referred to as the drone string. And uh, the, the, the two instruments, the, the, the source instrument and then what became the banjo in America um, share that commonality. In fact, it's the defining sound kind of of the banjo. If you take away that that drone string uh, that sits atop the banjo, it sounds really different. Uh, and if anyone really wants to go out and um, dive into sort of Irish banjo, which does not have that drone string versus the banjo, uh, the sort of American banjo, it's um, it has a different sound. And that sound comes from that drone string, and I'll show you when I'm playing. You'll kind of catch on to that. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it came over. We're not entirely sure if some of the of those original instruments came over during the slave trade, um, and or if uh, the the slaves that were uh, in the states had the memory of the instrument and then started creating them. But for, for however it got, it became an instrument that was uh, in the sort of plantation south and in America. And then things got, as things often do, kind of kind of a super bummer, where um, it, it got co-opted by a thing that is like the maybe the kind of weirdest part of our musical history in the States. Um, called it, it, There was a thing called minstrel shows. Um, we are, we're all familiar with blackface in terms of, you know, people that sort of don black makeup and then, you know, there's been no shortage of stories recently of politicians and celebrities that have, you know, sort of are, are getting, um, I don't know what you call it, called out and rightly so for having done it at, at some point in their past. Um, well, that that was happening during this era where these minstrel shows were happening and people were, um, white performers were donning blackface, going on stage, playing the banjo. The whole thing was a big sort of mockery of slave culture. Or, or black culture, I should say, uh, which at the time was still very much rooted in slavery. And um, that went, though, that's the weird part. That went for, like, I don't know the exact, I don't know, the span of time, but, like, 70 years or something. Like, it was long. And it wasn't like, oh, it's that unfortunate niche genre. It was, like, the number one style of entertainment. People just could not get enough of it. Broadway shows were minstrel shows. Touring shows were minstrel shows. And Europe, if you think you get out of this one scot-free, you guys couldn't get enough of them. We were exporting our minstrel shows over to Europe. It was a, it was a pretty super bummer uh, kind of situation. But during that process, the, the banjo kind of got co-opted and sort of taken in a way i mean it, it it got you know it if 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 the banjo becomes a symbol of the um a style of music which is uh oppressing so it's a heavy it's a heavy lead into banjo day isn't it but anyway it's worth mentioning um 
it, it, it sort of, yeah, it just, it sort of moved over and became a very much a, a, a white Southern instrument and a parlor instrument of, of, um, you know, women that would entertain in high society and they'd play the banjo and it was, it sort of just got, it got pulled away from its original roots. And that is started changing and, and it started to sort of take on more. It's the, you know, as people are acknowledging it's, it's kind of true past and kind of being able to talk about the kind of shitty part of minstrelsy over the years. Um, then it, it's, it started sort of becoming more diverse uh, instrument again. And one that is also the other part of it, which is, it's a major piece of American folk instruments. So it's complicated. Um, but uh, with all that complication, uh, I think it's a really beautiful instrument. So let me play a little bit for you. And um, we'll uh, and then we'll start uh, recording and doing all sorts of stuff. Now it's a it's a loud instrument, so I'm gonna have to be monitoring my compressor here. But basically, the the way here, can I move this down? Um, I play a style of um, right, I'll do this. I play a style of banjo called uh, clawhammer banjo. Clawhammer banjo is uh, not it's not a picking style. It's not that kind of um, I don't know what you, uh, what people might associate it that with. Uh, it's sort of Beverly Hillbillies. Down, 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 digga, 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 digga. It's not that fast stuff. It's it's a different style that is more. A... It's kind of got a more uh, something somewhat of a lyrical quality to to it. Um, and it's all, it's all done with, um, sort of downstrokes using the thumb and the nail. And so let me just tell you real quickly about that, um, that drone string. So that drone string is part of the sort of a recurring, it, that note doesn't change. It's, I'm, I'm just as part of the, uh, the strum, if you will. I mean, the, 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 the hand, the right hand pattern, um, that I'm doing, I'm, I'm often playing that. I'll, I'll accentuate that. Um, so you guys can sort of hear it. It's just going to keep popping up and it's, it becomes sort of this rhythmic and it's syncopated. It's on the upbeat. So you get this sort of like, you hear it? That one. You hear that? That's that, that, that's that drone string that kind of gives it something. If, if, I don't know if I can even do it without playing that. Let me see if I can. When you don't have that, it just, it's a, a little more of just a, a plunky guitar. Like you could almost grab a dobro and kind of create something of that, something of that sound. So anyway, now here's the thing though, that, that sort of. That sort of stuff. Like if, if I brought that into an in, into a session, um, that's not exactly well. I mean, maybe some people are, are getting ideas of what they would want to do with that, but um, that doesn't obviously lend itself to liquid drum and bass or you know acid house <laughs> or or any of any styles that we might make. Not you know. So um, it, what I thought I would do today is sort of play around with, and this is sort of the, the experimental part of, um, oh, Dwayne Allen says, I love the banjo face. Did I make a banjo face? I probably did. Um, play around with sort of the experimental side of working in reason with an instrument like this and, and sort of seeing what else we can do with it and sort of building a beat sort of from this that, I don't know, we're, we're going to just kind of see where it all goes. Um, so I'm going to jump over to reason and, um, I'm, I'm sort of, well, I, I was going to just kind of put down some kind of, you know, uh, some noodly noodles, and then we will maybe work from there. We'll just kind of see, I don't know. We'll put some stuff down. <laughs> this is a, this is going to get a little bit, we're going to delve into the unknown here. Um, but I'll just record a little bit and I'm going to have to turn down 
I'm gonna turn off the compressor and turn down the gain so that uh, so I'm gonna either have to shout to talk to you guys or um, not talk to you guys for a little bit while I record. So let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm in tune. Cause that would be a bummer. Close enough for jazz. Okay. Oh, I think, did I, did I have my, no, I think it was still on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a new audio track and let's put some something down. Oh, you know what? Let's go, let's go 90 BPM for something kind of, I don't know, something, something. Uh, I'll turn on the click. And I'll put some stuff down. now thinking about what I've played already. So let me do this. There was a little, there was a moment that happened where I was like, that was kind of interesting. Let's see, enter acoustic drums, uh, 120. Um, uh, Eric Swag, looks like it would be cool some dark tone. Yeah, so let's, um, let me see if I can find this here. There was this moment while I was playing where I was like, ooh, ooh, wait, that's a moment. Um, let's see here. Somewhere around here. Yeah, 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 it was that, it was that. I don't know, there's something about the little skip there that I liked. Um, let me think here. I'm going to just listen to some of the rest of this for a second. It's all, it's this, a lot of this is just me kind of finding, kind of finding myself with the click and, and kind of just messing up. I mean, it's, it's all messing about. There's, there's really no cohesive um, melody or riff to this, but, but let's see. So yeah, okay, I'm, I'm still drawn to that, that one section, but it's interesting, I just, I'll mention here, um, 
if you listen, if you just, in terms of hearing a person think out loud, you'll hear, there's this thing I'm drawn to right now. And there's somewhere around here where you can hear me starting to find that. Listen. Like, I don't have it yet, but it, you can hear my ear is looking for it. <laughs> so here it is. I guess here I... There, I found it. I like that. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? So now, since we're not making a banjo song, I'm actually gonna chop that out. And let's treat it more like a sample. And now I could, I could treat it like a two bar sample. Or, hmm, you know what we could do? We could just, we could time stretch this all willy nilly because why not? Who's to stop us? Um, if you guys, this is maybe just some something of a, a random tip here. If you guys uh, don't play around with reasons, I'm gonna move my camera up, uh, play around with reasons time stretch much, uh, do because cool things. Well, I say cool things happen before I've before I've played this one back. Uh, let's just see what this is doing. I mean, it's cool. Let's throw a little reverb on it. Where is that? It is on audio track one. So, I mean, already like, you know, we're, we're, it's banjo, but it's obviously slowed down and not banjo. And so that sort of straddles that hybrid for me as a, now, as a banjo player, I still hear that drone string. Remember that drone string? It's still there. Is it? There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> so I hear that. That's sort of like a like this the fingerprint, the, the signature of the banjo is still there, even though we've slowed it down, which is kind of a, I don't know, kind of interesting. Um, I like the reverb and um, let's, um, you know, I've got a giant banjo on my lap. Let me take this off for a second because I want to muck around with this and see where it goes. <sighs> All right. Um, I'm going to put a delay on this too, just to kind of vibe it a more. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's hang with that for a second. I'm I'm thinking now, so bear with me while I think out loud here. Um, I sort of what what I, I you know I know that uh, the weirdest thing to do sometimes is to record a banjo and then make it sound less and less like a banjo by adding effects. But let's um I'm I'm kind of liking this as a texture. Yuhani uh, proclaims me Ryan Eno Lanois. Uh, well, let's, if we're going to go there, why don't we go there a little more? Why don't we, um, let's put on, let's put on an effect. You know what I don't use enough is alligator. Weird, but cool. Let's, uh, Let's roll these up to some of the earlier. So, 
So something just to point out, maybe I'll point out some of the technicals for the, the people playing along at home. Um, it's worth kind of keeping an, an eye on the places that I've applied my effects. So I put the alligator here on the insert effect, which means that it is going to pass through at 100% wetness the alligator before it gets to my mix channel. And then in the mix channel, I've applied send effects. Now, what that means is if I had, if I hadn't done that via send effects, if I had instead started thinking immediately in terms of an insert chain and I put in a reverb and then I put in a uh, delay, a couple of things would happen. First of all, it would have been um, serialized in the sense that it would have gone through the reverb and then the delay, and that has a different effect. But then it also would have gone through the reverb, then the delay, then the alligator, and that would have an entirely different effect. So what we're actually getting here is we're adding reverb and delay independently, not in a serial effect chain, to the alligatored signal rather than alligatorizing the reverb delay signal, if that if, if that makes sense, if you're following me, it's, it's worth sometimes thinking about that. I mean, that is something of just my process right now, something of a fluke in the sense that I, I wasn't thinking that through, but I'm realizing right now that if I, if I had done it in a different way, it would sound different. So something to, something to think about using your sends and your inserts strategically to determine what is getting affected and in what way and what, what is feeding into an effect versus what is affecting a feed, if that makes sense. No. That's kind of cool. Kind of like some of the little... I don't know what you call it. Ooh. I hope this is coming out to you guys in stereo, because that's... Ooh. Hang on. We're going to make a loop. Guys, I like that. Now, again, as a banjo player, I still hear the essence of that fifth string in there. I'd, I wouldn't expect an, the end listener to uh, necessarily hear it. I'm going to make this a little longer. Um, I wouldn't expect uh, and, and the listener to maybe hear that, but... I, um, it's, there's still something there. It was the end of the phrase that has most of that little drone string in there. Listen. It's that, it's that note, but an octave higher. Here it comes. You hear it? It's like this, it is becoming a call and response tone in a kind of cool thing. Mark says it's dreamy. <laughs> Ping pong and banjos, says Kirk. Yeah. Um, so, oh, reason output needs turning up. Is that true? Okay. We're going to manage our, manage my reason output. Oh boy, here we go. It's funny. It's, it's actually all going through reason. So let me, um, I'll just turn up that channel. I mean, that is a really, that's a neat, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm going to go with that. That is a neat little, that's a vibe. It sort of sends my, you know, I mean, the most we can hope for when we are in the process of creating is to send your, your mind in a certain direction. Like, it, I don't know how this will turn out, but I can already, like, I hear, how do I describe this? I'm sure you've all felt this. It's sometimes almost a, a frustrating feeling where you, you, you are like, wait, I know what this could be. And I, you just wish you could like leapfrog and just be there. But instead you have to try and get there to get to the thing you already feel. This thing makes you feel something. And how can you now get the rest of the music to that point 
without ruining it in the process. That's sort of the, the process that goes along now. You go, oh, that's really nice. Ooh, and I could I could sort of hear like maybe, you know, like I'm hearing some sort of drum, something, something like a kind of kind of a percussion-y type of thing. I don't know. Let's just get to it. Um, I have, let's see, I'm going to go back to a uh, reason here. I have uh, a piano already loaded up here. So I'm going to just use that. And because I don't ever dare to try and play piano in front of you guys, because I kind of don't, I play very badly. Uh, I'm going to put a uh, scales and chords up here and my banjo is tuned to D major. So I'll, um, I'll go to D major. I we'll see what we uh, end up with here. Um, let's go octave down. Turn this up a bit. And... Ooh, ooh. Wow, that... That's a song. It's reminding me of a song. I can't think of which one it is, but it's a, it's a good song. Um, I'm going to loop this, and then I'm just going to muck about with um, seeing how piano kind of fits over this. And let me see if I can switch. I have... Huh? Oh, look at that. We got a camera. Okay. Uh, here, I'll even switch over to this one and let's, um, let's just play a little bit and see what chords fit nicely over our vibe. And I hopefully won't overload the broadcast. Let's try it. here for the last broadcast we did on chord progressions we, uh, that we did that um let me pull up and i gotta oh wait no should I, no actually i'll keep this on so i can talk to you guys um so anyone who was uh, around for the last stream i did about chord progressions and i was talking about these one four five progressions and how so many songs are based on them and and how they're they're not taboo to use they're very effective tools working with those um you know the, the those root the the root chord the one the the dominant chord that's getting the subdominant I mean the the one the four and the five they are they are absolutely good tools to reach for and so listen to what happens that's what I'm doing this that's D that's that's the one chord I mean it's a chord because I've got scales and chords turned on and then that's a G that's the four chord and then that's the five chord if all I did was those chords, just listen to the vibe it, it, it gives us here. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to put that down. Um, now, maybe this is something of... A, now I'm going to delve back into my last week's topic. Um, something I might do on a vibey thing like this, instead of basing myself around the one chord, you know, I can start and return to the one. That would be like, you know, in its dumbest form, that's like Louie Louie. Right? Um... So instead of basing myself, kind of centering my progression around the, the, the one, I'll, I'll start either on the five or on the four. And then it's sort of, it, it effectively, I'm going to like, I'm offsetting the progression so that it's tonally centered, not around the root of the key, but around a, a little, a, a chord that gives it just a little bit more tension as its home base than, than full resolution, if that makes sense. Um, in fact, I'm sure the music theory guys in the crowd will tell me something about um, 
yeah, Ryan, that's uh, you're in a different mode. That's you're in Mixolydian or you're in Dorian or something, which maybe I maybe that's what I'm actually doing and don't realize it. But um, let's go ahead and I'll put down some type of chord thing here. Let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to put the click on. Do I like that? I like how it started. Let me take a look. You guys are watching the wrong screen. Let me give you that back. There you go. Um, let's take a look. I'm going to quantize it because, hey, that's me. Love that. Don't love that. Here's what I don't love about that. Well, first of all, my, I hit the velocity too hard, so it was a little like, hey, look at me. Um, but also, I'm going to go back to the four chord instead of up to the five. Yeah. Oh. I'll move this one. Let's move that to the five. I'm gonna set my loop. Whoops. Mark wants to hear this banjo transposed. Whoa! This is very exciting. Exciting, exciting, exciting. But not right. Um, yeah, Mark wants to hear the um, banjo transposed. So let me go ahead and duplicate that. And um, transpose these up an octave, he says. And blend it in? Sure, let's just see what happens. Ooh, oh boy. All right, Mark, I'm going to I'm going to move that uh to the stereo off to the side in the stereo so it's not there's a little bit of a thing that I'm hearing which is the I think it's the sort of the overtone resonance of the banjo which is um sort of creating a uh kind of weird something of a weird sound there but it's in in small order it's not the worst. Um so I'm going to label tracks just because why not? We'll call that banjo and I'll call that one Mark Transpose. You made it into the song, Mark. Oh, wait, but I think I misspelled your name. Isn't it with a C? I think it's with a C. I either misspelled your name originally or now I misspelled it. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Um, I like this. Um, let's, let's do something else. What should go in here? I'll put this in here. Woo! Coming in hot. Nope.
abstract seems like maybe a good place to go. A folder. Oh, that doesn't though. Should we completely ruin this with a four on the floor kick? Let's forget that ever happened. Ooh, that's vibey. Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's. I mean, that's not exactly music, as it were, but it's vibe. It's it. It sort of is. I don't know who made that patch. Kudos, Stockholm. Industrial noise. I like it. Um, it it's got to almost. I don't know if this is a good thing or bad thing for you guys viewing, but it's it, there's almost a sort of uh, transatlanticism era Death Cab for Cutie thing when you put that with the piano and then the vibey banjo. Suddenly we're. I don't know. We're in a, we're in a zone. We're, we're in a place. Um, actually there's, this is a, a weird circular callback. My, my banjo teacher, the, the guy that I study banjo with, his name's Tom Collins and anyone who's taking banjo, you should check him out. Um, but he has this concept. Um, I don't think it's actually his, he heard it in an interview. Somebody asked somebody, what is music? And their answer was music is a place. And he sort of puzzled over it, he says, you know, and it wasn't until later he had this experience where he was listening to music and in a place that he sort of understood the connection between place and music and stuff. And so, you know, in a weird way uh, and in a roundabout kind of uh, random story, suddenly this noise, even though it's rather insignificant and I'm not going to overuse it, it, it sends this thing into a place. So I'll just put down some random clonks. You know, it would help if I arm the track for recording. Here we go. Okay, now there's one that I felt like I went too far. Let me listen back. I think it was the third one I didn't love. Or fourth one? Let's see. Yeah, that's the one. Boo. Okay, let's fill over here. I just wonder, maybe I'll put one right at the top. Oh boy. The top of the loop. get quieter if it goes quieter oh boy what is that i just want to hear it loop now Yeah, okay, that's it's subtle enough that it's it's there. If it weren't there, I'd miss it. But being there, I don't really notice it on the loop. Kind of makes the loop cohesive. Okay, cool. Um, industrial noise. I like you. Let's maybe uh, put some drums. I was saying I was kind of feeling 
some uh, some kind of percussiony, clickety clackety, somethingy somethingy. Um, <laughs> this is already the soundtrack for a Netflix teen drama. I don't. Yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, Netflix, call me. Um, <laughs> oh, in a good way. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Kingpin Ronan. Um, I'm looking to see what else is going on in the comments here. Um, fifth one should be low says marty are you talking about the industrial noise i'm not sure if it's pitched or not but if it is i will move it one two three four five so we're here yeah i can't even even going back and forth i can't tell if the pitch is a function of like there's some subtle difference yeah there's a subtle difference so yeah okay sure all right you just earned three percent of the royalty marty <laughs> kidding uh let's see um let's do, do let's do this let's um i'll go to because i don't want to have you guys sit and watch me program drums all day uh let's go to um beat map and do we do a let me just take, I'm going to take a listen to some drums and see what's up. Show devices. No. Um, maybe experimental is the wrong vibe. <clears throat> Should we go here? Let's we'll drop this one on. Oh, wait, did that, did that accurately switch the preset? Or did I just completely... Oh, no, I completely goofed it up. Hang on. Undo. Now, let's put that on here. I'll take a listen. Okay, now, that's not... It's not right, but it's causing me to... to pa cause to pause... Let me just hear what it sounds like with the song for a second. Okay, now it kind of sounds like a Paula Abdul song right now, if I can make a completely obscure late 80s, maybe American only reference. Um, but that being said, there's something going on there in the top that I like. So I'm going to um, high pass filter all that bass stuff. Maybe I'll even, should I even kill that kick? something there's something to it um let's gonna turn up the piano a little bit I'm thinking guys i'm thinking um let me do this I'm going to send this, my loop is set up. I'm going to click send it. I went away while I shared that to track. Um, did I send it to track? No, I didn't. Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Let's try this again. Okay, I'm going to go away while this happens. Am I back? I'm back. But why is it not? Why is that not sending the track? What am I missing, guys? Hang on. It's still running. Do I have to go direct record? So I don't have to troubleshoot this right now? Let's try that. It's st 
still not going. Why is this? Who is more clever than me? What am I doing wrong? Answer, I don't know. Well, now I got to go. Do I file a bug report or do I file a dull report on myself? Um, but okay, let's think through this. We'll do this a different way. I will... When in doubt, I will bounce mixer channels. I hope my mic doesn't go away while I do this. If it does, uh, enjoy the silence for a little bit. I think I'm still here. Yay. Okay. So uh, I'll normalize this. We're going to do Blue Mini. We're going to do Loop, New Tracks, and Song. Here we go. I'm going to go away while this bounces. Okay, there it is. We'll take it. Um, okay, so now let me play back. So the reason I did this, though, uh, was because this sort of has this, like, this, like, loping... Uh, it's like a backbeat little skip thing, and what I was going to play around with is uh, offsetting this a little bit. So let me... Let's go an eighth note. We were hearing both. Hang on. Go back another one. Um, yeah, sure. I'm going to take this part that I just offset. I'm going to move that over here and delete that. We'll call that a thing. Um, I need to vibe this up a little more, though. So let me add to this. Sweeper? Let's see. Oh. Sure. Okay, now let me just, so I'm doing a little housekeeping here. Um, I'm going to jump in on the comments, <clears throat> see what's up. Um, Def got to do some reverses of this groove. Okay. Koichi jumping in the comments there saying we got to reverse it. Let's uh, see what happens when we do something like that. Reverse. Yo, oh boy. That maybe is a little too much. That's like cayenne pepper. You put in a dash and suddenly it's like, whoa. Uh, let's find maybe just a section of this gets reversed and not the whole. I'm caught up in another thing. I just shifted it another eighth forward again because I, I think I actually like the um, eighth, not a full quarter note offset. Let 
Maybe if I just grab like that part and reverse it. Let's see what happens. Eh, I don't know. It's not blowing my mind, but then then again, maybe this is why I should be collabing with Koichi and not uh, trying to interpret him. But okay, let's uh, let's put on. So we've got the top percussion, but let's put on um, the lower percussion. Should we, should we just put college drums on it? Oh no! It's a attack of college drums. I got hit with the most vanilla beat ever. Oh man. Uh, no, let's go to um, loop supply. And um, so the, in loop supply, the hip hop's got the the beats that are kind of in, around this tempo. So we'll we'll go in there and. Um, when I, because I've already got the top percussion, I'm not entirely interested in sort of these full, like, that. Or that. See all that, all that percussion that's on there? That's, that doesn't super wow me. Um, so, when I, it's not that it doesn't super wow me. Maybe I should, I should think out loud a little better for you guys. That space is already occupied, so I don't need to necessarily add more um, percussion to it. And so in a nice way, we have these kick snare only patterns. I should probably be, I guess, technically auditioning them with I drag it on here and just see kind of where we're at. Definitely no. Okay, so here's what I'm hearing here. It, the pattern, I'm not sure is quite right, and we can address that, but I like, I guess, the sound of that kick snare. I like that the, the kick is a little bit, I don't know what you would call that. Someone help me out on what that is. It's like, it's like a synth snare, not a real acoustic snare. Like it's a very drum machine and it's like kind of high and thin rather than big and deep. Um, so uh, I like that. So here's what I'm going to do. But you know what? Okay, here's the deal. Um, maybe it's maybe it's tip time for people that don't know this. I want to put reverb on that snare. And obviously I could let me run it for a second. I could turn on a reverb, but do you hear what happens? We've got reverb on the entire loop, and I don't want to put reverb on my kick drum. Some people do that. I don't. I tend to think that you're just inviting, um, or at least in my experience, you're inviting mixing problems by muddying up your kick with this reverb and, and muddying up your reverb with this low frequency information and all of that. So, um, so on a Rex loop like this, I want to get at the snare drum. I want to put the reverb on the snare drum only. And so here's what I do. If you watch, um, I'm going to turn on select slice by MIDI. Um, and if I turn that on, when I play this, um, loop, you'll see the slices as they trigger off. And as they do that, you'll very quickly realize that some of these slices are kicks and some are hi-hats and some are snares. So watch. Oops. Go again. All 
Okay, so now do you see? So like, that's a snare, that's a snare, that's a snare, that's a snare. I think that's a snare. And then there might even be this little thingy here might actually be a little like ghost note snare or something. Play, play, play it again. Yeah. So <clears throat> now watch what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into slice edit mode and I'm going to click on the out output tab and in slice edit mode, if you guys haven't messed with slice edit mode, man, that's your, that's your day. That's, that's when, when I'm done streaming, that's your day. Go play with slice edit mode because what we can do, well, we can do a lot of things. We could change the pitch of individual slices. We could do stereo panning on individual slices. We could do the levels on individual slices, which I find usually pretty handy if if I got like a trap sample. Trap samples often, I find, loops have really loud snare drums, and so I, I actually pull those snare drums down. But one, one of the things we can also do is we can assign different outputs. So if I go to this um, slice and I change, you see I've got like basically I can draw, let's not do that. Um, I can I can draw an, like an automated value and each step here relates to different outputs on the back of Dr. Octorex. So I'm going to assign my snare drums to different outputs than everything else which is still at the default main output which is all the way down. And I'm going to jump well, let me first do this. Let me make a mix channel. And then I'm going to jump onto the back and I'm going to wire up so I can just take cables and wire them up to my mix channel for the CSS slice output. These are the those automated uh, slice output uh, settings. So uh, I think the one in the middle is three, four, actually. It wasn't one and two. So I've got outputs three and four going to a new mix channel. I'll call this new mix channel snare. And I'm going to temporarily mute it. And if I just run my loop now, what we should hear is just the kick with no snare and maybe the hi-hat, I guess, too. There's a little ghost note. Should I fix that? Yeah. Hear that little snare in there? Oh, boy. Um, here, let's add this to our output three and four. That's that little ghost note. Let's play it again. Yeah, okay, so that's now all kick drum. And if I, I can't solo that without you not hearing me, but I'll, you're not gonna hear me for a second, but if I solo this, we should hear only snare. Great. So now what we've got is two independent channels for our kick and snare, which means I can come back here, unmute my snare, and I can put a reverb. I could just use this one. Let's see. Let's, I'm going to solo my drums. Hang on. i got to solo myself too. But So let's, if, we, if I play just our, my drums now, you'll hear that the kick is clean and the snare has reverb. which is cool. But the question then becomes, do I want that reverb? And for the sake of just variety, why don't I put a different reverb on? Should I put a, should I put a VST plugin on? I'm going to do that because why not? Here, I have a, a VST reverb, um, seventh heaven. And that's a nice little reverb. It's just different. You know, sometimes the nicest thing about using things you don't often use is they're just not the things you often use. <laughs> Chalk that one up into Ryan's book of obvious statements. The things you don't often use are the things you don't often use.
Sure, let's take a listen to that. Let's take a listen to that in the uh, mix and see. I wonder if you guys, you probably aren't seeing the BST window, are you? No, you aren't. Uh, okay, well, hey. We can't have it all. Um, okay, so here is the... I'm gonna roll off some of the top end on that one, on the snare. Next order of business, um, which I haven't quite tweaked yet. Yeah. It's the drum pattern. So, I like the drum sounds, and the drum pattern's okay, but maybe not entirely so much. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to uh, right click and choose copy loop to track. That is going to convert this loop into MIDI slices or MIDI notes, I should say, that are triggering those slices. If anybody hasn't messed with Rex files, these, what you're seeing here are the, the same notes Remember when we saw the the slices going by when we played the loop? This is the same slices. The kick. So I can go ahead and modify the pattern a little bit if I want to. So let me just take a listen here. I'm gonna I'm gonna loop just this part of it. Let's see here. So yeah, like I think it's the, one of the. This is one of the ones that's bugged me. It's a little too kind of swung, like boom, gap, ba boom. Like it, this isn't a gap, ba boom kind of vibe. So let's uh, let's delete that one. Or wait, is it this one that's getting me? Or is it both? Let me change the sixteenths. Do I need to add a No, you know, okay, so it needs a little of that pickup. Now you might notice here that I'm I'm choosing different slices. I don't, honestly, I don't even know if that matters. I could maybe leave this one up here, but for whatever reason, I've always, for years, I've just always kind of tried to steer clear of their horizontal orientation. Here, this needs a dump dump. Should I take that ghost note away? Gung. I'm just messing about, so we'll we'll find it eventually. See, superstition had to move it. I think I'm going to change that from a ghost note to another kick. Sure. I think that's that's something. Okay, so I've got my modified loop. I'm going to duplicate that. So it runs the full length of our little vibey... Uh, what is this? Is this eight bars? 
Nine bars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Mathilia says, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear a singer add some Vox to this track. The vibe is rocking. Well, you know, maybe what I should do, because I saw another comment about, uh, have peeps use this as a sample and sort of create, I guess, effectively remixes off this or whatever. Um, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll go ahead and I say I, uh, Stefan, maybe <laughs> we'll figure out how we can share this. I, I'm, I'm happy to share this file with people and then they can just run with it because I'm, I, I probably won't do anything further with it. So it is yours to the world. The stream, the streams, collective, um, creative output to, to mess about with this. I should mention that it is using though, if you yeah, there's a, I'll, have to, I'll think about it. There's, I'll have to figure out a couple of things. Like I've got that uh, VST. I might have to like bounce that to audio so you don't get a problem there. And maybe I'll also, we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll bounce certain channels and then also leave them as like complex one. If you don't have reason suite um, or beat map, if you don't have beat map, um, you would be hosed. So We'll, uh, we'll figure that out, but yeah, we'll get you guys a thing. And Mathilia, if you want to put some vocals on or find a vocalist, like go for it, man. And then share it with us. That'd be another thing. If you guys do want to run with this, like send them to us. And then like, I don't know if you're fast, we'll next week, we'll share some of uh, the stuff people did with this. But for my dollars, my time um, here's what I'll do. Um, I'm going to just kind of clip this a little bit. Then now I've got this whole thing. How oh, can I make, you know, put a little thing there. Do pink. I'm going to duplicate this for a little while because do I go that far? Should I keep going? I'm going to just keep going. We, all right, that's plenty of loop. Um, I, you know, what I was thinking is um, as as we kind of this idea is starting to round out and take some shape, but maybe we should dial this all back and throw some uh, good old banjo on it again because we have drifted pretty far from banjo, haven't we? Which isn't a bad thing, but since I don't have a vocalist. Um, maybe I will do the melodic part of, uh, sort of what, what Mathilia was starting to expect or hear, which is that, um, you kind of want, you know, this is all <laughs> banjo solo. This is all, uh, this is all kind of rhythmic and vibe. And so let's give it a little bit of melodic framework maybe. So, um, let's figure that out. How might that go? Okay. So I'm going to have to kind of do weird things again here. Um, we're gonna turn down the compressor. So now it's gonna be, now we are uncompressed. We're operating sans compressor people. I'm gonna turn down the gain so I don't blow the mic. Let's see here. Just before I get into this, uh, ripping the band. I'm just gonna check out the comments real quick. See, can you use Beatmap without Reason Suite? Uh, yeah, you certainly can. I mean, Beatmap is a, uh, it's a rack extension that is in the Reason Studio shop unto itself, but it just happens to come in Reason Suite as well. Uh, oh, um, Stefan says I think Reason Ten and later. Good call, Stefan. Thank you. Um, all right, let's. Um, I'm just gonna kind of. You know, it's a vibe, so I'm just going to vibe around on this and just sort of see what comes of it and hopefully not totally blow it. Let's see here. You know what I should do is I should put a little, well, the verb. 
Ooh, oh boy. Maybe not that much. Yeah, sure. Okay, here we go. Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, we'll call that good enough for jazz. And uh, let me turn this stuff back on. And there was some stuff in there. There wasn't, wasn't all wonderful, but some stuff. Um, <laughs> Ryan Blue nailed it. I, uh, I hope so. Let's, oh, let's see here. I'm going to, I kind of, I kind of didn't blue nail it until a little bit later. Let's see. Let's jump into around this section and see what's happening. Um, 
I'll back this up a little bit. So, I mean, this is sort of, you know, obviously in, in real, um, in real music making, what you're watching me do there is, uh, think out loud. And then I would go back and like, for example, you know, there's that, um, uh, there's a thing I kind of hit upon. What was it? Uh, there. Yeah. And then when you go to the five chord, so I would, I'd probably start exploring that and, um, and, and developing it more, but in terms of our stream, we won't do that. <laughs> we guys don't want to watch me perfect a banjo part and, and all that. Um, but there's, you know, there's some vibe in there. It, it's, it's definitely so, you know, for, for being, here's what I hope is that for this being banjo day, we've kind of played both sides of the fence here. We started out taking a banjo, making it sound nothing like a banjo. We got this vibe. And then we added some uh, piano to that. We did some chords. This actually ended up following up on our previous stream about chord progressions. And then we found this little industrial noise. And that's just a little piece of vibe. Here it comes again. Again. Ooh. Then what do we do? Oh, then we put percussion on it. And then we added these drums. We separated their outputs so that we could put reverb on the snare and then we changed the pattern. And then we bring it all home with, well, hang on, let's do this. Burp. Putting the banjo back on. We'll compress it a bit too. It's not too bad. Um, Christian, love the vibe of this. Need to put some vocals on it. I agree. Yeah. Hey, man, guys, put someone, someone put vocals on it. Make it a vocal competition. Who can come up with the coolest thing? Or maybe everyone can come up with something cool, and that's that's cool unto itself. Justin Ziska says Beatles. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's a reference to a sounding like the Beatles. I mean, you wouldn't be wrong. I was raised, I was raised on the Beatles. My mama taught me well. Um, so yeah, yeah, maybe there's some of that in there. Uh, Radiohead probably, yeah, I could see that some of that vibe in there. So anyway, um, I'm just looking here at the comments here. Uh, what rev is your blue nail? <laughs> that that's right. Koichi. It would be a rev a blue stripe nail. Absolutely. Um, blue man group featuring Ryan. That's true. That's as, that's as blue as I'm going to get though. Uh, in, in future streams, hopefully we'll see a new color once I get something better. Um, just joined. Man, that banjo sounds nice. Ah, Beats 04. You, it was all banjo all day today. All banjo. But I think that is probably where we will leave it. I mean, I'll, I'll play us out uh, with what we did today. But I think that's uh, I think it's kind of good. We kind of achieved some milestone of music happening. And like I said, I'll figure out a way to... Uh, share this uh, with Stefan and then that way we can you guys can muck with this all you want really but there it is I hope you guys had fun today we'll be back next week I'm going to I think uh, hopefully Adam's feeling better if Adam's feeling better I can just announce now that Adam Fielding will be my guest next week and uh, we'll We'll talk about Adam's wheelhouse. Adam makes some amazing... Adam has his own Twitch stream. So 
check those out too if he's doing them during the week. But um, yeah, Justin, you actually said my name correct. That's a, maybe a first. Um, I'm gonna turn down some of that banjo. But guys, I had a blast. As always, we'll do this again next week. Have fun, make music, we'll publish this. If anybody makes something and you put vocals on top of this, like send it to us, because we would love to hear it. Or if you remix this and you chop this up and do something else with it, just show us, show us what you do. And hopefully, hopefully these streams are about more than watching me make music. It's actually about you guys making music too, because I really, let's be honest, I shouldn't be having all the fun, right? So. Have a good one, guys. Always good hanging with you. I'll see you next week on Your Reason to Stay Inside. And get your pipes ready, because it's week 11 next week. And you know that intro music says 11. And you better believe we're going to be hitting that milestone. Anyway, take care, guys. See you next week.